for episode 13 of Gargana. My name is Anita and I live in South Wales in the UK. I hope you're all managing to keep cool in this heat. I've got the windows shut to film this episode and I'm boiling already. Um, you may have noticed I've had a haircut. It is so warm this is meant to be cooler for me and uh, more importantly on the baby front news, my daughter and son-in-law are expecting uh, a little boy in November. So it's been announced uh, it's going to be a boy. So Harry is going to have a little brother for company for Christmas. So that's lovely. There seem to be a lot of people pregnant at the moment. Like I said last time, in my, uh, people I know personally but also some podcasters we're expecting too. There's Katie from Inside Number 23 and Danny from Little Bobbins. So I'm keeping a close eye on the things they make and um, I'm going to make a few of them myself for my little grandson to be. And I'm also going to make some for Harry as well, which I will show you as we go along. I'm very hot, sorry about this. Right. I've made some notes quickly because everybody's out at the moment, so I'm just trying to fit in a quick podcast. So if I leave it too long and there's too many things, it gets a bit daunting, so I'm trying to keep up with things. I have a couple of finished objects this week, and I shall show you my first. I have put it on Instagram. I'm Anita Bulb on Instagram, if you want to find me and follow me. I have finished my Love's Promise cardigan by Amanita and here it is in the lovely yarn by Craft House Magic. You can't really see it very well. I did put it on ready to film this podcast but it was so warm even though it's so light and cool it's supposed to be but it's just so hot at the moment. I think it's 27 and a half degrees in my craft room today and this is the front of the house that doesn't get the sun in the afternoon so I know it's not hot to some people but it's very hot for us and it's got this lovely lace patterning down the side and the little pleat in the sleeves that I really like see if I can show you that I don't know if you can see This camera, or the webcam, shows everything the opposite way around to, to what my mind is telling me. So I keep showing you on the wrong side. But when it cools down a little bit later, I shall put the cardigan on and add a little bit of footage here. And then you can see properly because that was quite pathetic, my attempt at showing you that. So that's my one project that's finished and I've started and finished a project that I haven't shown you on the podcast while I was waiting for Jody to find out whether my new grandchild was going to be a boy or a girl. I started this project. I, I don't think I've shown you. So it's a little mermaid's tail. I thought it was quite cute and um, I had some style craft, um, let's see, what was it? Um, style craft special DK leftovers from quite a long time ago. I made a crochet bag from an Attic 24 pattern. If you haven't heard of Attic 24, She's got a blog and there are lots and lots of um, free crochet patterns and tutorials on there. And there was a crochet bag and I made that and you had to have lots of different colours. I shall see if I can find a picture of it and insert it here. I was going to just bring the bag and show you, but I forgot. <laughs> so I shall insert a picture and um, I had to have lots of different coloured yarns and I had loads left and then with the leftover yarn uh, a friend of mine's daughter was expecting last year and I crocheted her a baby blanket with it and then there's still more left and I've made the little mermaid's tail with it and 
and um, there's still more left so I might make a few more of these if any one of the ladies I know who are expecting wants one. So there's my two finished objects and when I finished the Love's Promise cardigan I had bought three skeins of the lovely yarn by Craft House Magic called Here Comes the Rain Again and as you can see I have a whole skein left and I was thinking I wanted to make something else with it and because it's four ply I can knit with four ply at the moment but it's very hot to knit anything heavier. I have some nice jumper patterns uh, in the pipeline ready for my grandchildren but um, I'm not going to start on those until it gets a bit cooler. So I went on to Ravelry and had a look to see what I could find. I wanted to do a shawl, a one skein shawl and um, I wanted something obviously that would show, my, show this yarn off to best effect and I came across the Spindrift, Spind, Spindrift Shawl by Curious Handmade and it's um, a free pattern on Ravelry or you go to her, there's a link to go to her website and um, or blog, I'm not very technically minded you can tell and you can print the pattern off for free and then there's also a tutorial and other things on there which um, I thought would be interesting so um, I've got that in mind for my for my spare skein of yarn because I don't want it sat just in my stash like I say I'm trying to use everything up I am going to be buying more yarn but it's going to be baby yarn so that's fair enough because I need some nice yarn to make baby clothes with talking of baby clothes I've also decided I'm going to do the flax light I saw I watched the uh, most recent episode of Inside Number 23 and Katie had fitted this for her baby tree and it was so lovely and you can knit it from a baby size all the way up to an adult and um, this is the little baby one here it's the flax light and um, I'm going to use this yarn that I bought in Wonderwall this year. It's Dye Ninja and it's just the navy colourway, high twist fing merino fingering. The only trouble with this is you have to hand wash it, so I shall knit it and Jody can give it back to me to wash it because I think it's a little bit unfair on new mums to expect them to hand wash things and I don't mind doing it but I do try usually to make to buy yarn that um, you could just throw in the washing machine when I'm making things for little children but I wanted to make a couple of special things and um, I can always wash them for Jodie so that's not a problem so that was that I'm just looking at my my notes I made a couple of notes Oh, the mermaid tail pattern. I did show you, didn't I? The mermaid tail pattern here is by Karen Wiederhold. Wiederhold. And that's on Ravelry as well. And that was a free pattern. And on to sewing. It's just a quick... I'm just rushing through because I want to try and get this done before anyone turns up again and makes a racket and we're gonna oh that's better so hot we're going to walk charlie later we've been walking her later in the evening about eight o'clock half past eight because it's just so warm for her we walk her before eight in the morning and after eight at night and all day she lolls around the house while i'm out working right Sewing. I'm going to start with acquisitions because, now let me see, I think it's to my left so therefore I need to point that way and I have bought a Singer Overlocker 
from Lidl's. I expect you're all familiar with the Lidl's Sewing Week and a couple of, for a couple of years, I've seen the overlockers and um, I thought my skills are sewing. I wasn't good enough to not, not deserve an overlocker, but I felt I should get used to my sewing machine first. Why I thought that, I don't know, because I went and got my overlocker and I was a little bit worried about threading it. It didn't come with thread. Oh, it didn't come with thread, obviously, but I hadn't thought of that at the time. So I had to order some on the internet and had to wait for it. And I'm not very patient when it comes to waiting for things because if I see a new project, I want to stay, start it straight away. So I had to wait patiently for my thread to come from eBay. And I bought some, um, Coats thread because um, I'd read that it's best to get a good quality thread and coats have been going for years haven't they so I bought three grey and three cream because I have four spools done it wrong four spools on my overlocker but I've read that you use if you use three medium grey for darker fabrics and just the main colour on one spool and also for light fabrics three cream and the main colour on one spool then you don't have for four thread for four reels of every colour so that made sense to me so I decided I was going to make something simple to start off with and I had a little test run on a little bit of scrap thread, uh, material and then I decided I wanted to make a dress. So I got all excited. I threaded the overlocker with navy thread because I had some leftover material. I planned to make a, uh, I wanted to make a Minetta dress because I'd made that before. So I had all the pattern pieces cut out, laid it all out on the table and I didn't have enough fabric. And then I was, what can I do? And there was a couple of other fabrics I had that I could make a Minetta out of but they were lighter colours because they were more summery and I threaded my overlock with navy thread and I wasn't unthreading it. So I looked in my blanket box of materials and found some of this material that you may remember if you've seen previous episodes. I made Jodie a cocoa dress with this it's a scuba fabric. Um, I can't remember where I got it from, but I will put it down on the screen when I do the editing. So I had some of this, but not very much. I couldn't make a dre another dress out of it. So I was looking through my patterns thinking, what could I do? <laughs> and then I found this pattern. I bought this when I was first, when I first started back sewing. And um, I decided I wanted to make Harry a pair of pyjamas. I was going to make this one um, just in jersey. You can make them in cotton or jersey on this pattern. But I thought I'd make him that because it didn't really matter how they turned out. If they were awful, if one leg was thin and one leg was wide or they, it was wonky, it didn't matter. It was pyjamas. Who was going to see it? So I couldn't go wrong, I thought. But I did because I ordered the pattern and when it came, I think it said the age range was from, oh, there we are. It says there's an age range from two to eight. So I thought that was great. He was about two at the time, I think. So I ordered this and when it arrived, the age range on this packet is six to eight years I didn't realise that they came in blocks of ages, so that was my um, lack of knowledge on sewing. Um, so I tried to make him a pair of shorts, um, a smaller pair, and they were very baggy because I was still learning, And but he wears them a lot and likes them, so I thought I'll make him another pair. and. It's not really the right fabric for a little boy, but I've started them. 
I was hoping to have finished them to show you completely, but I have to overlock the leg seams and then sew them up. My machine, does the sewing machine, doesn't like this scuba and it keeps jumping. So I've been hand stitching. I hand stitched the, the um, hem, the fold over at the top of the waistline and I did herringbone stitch and I used a tutorial on YouTube to show me how to do that and herringbone stitch, if you don't know, keeps it stretchy so um, it was ideal with this. There's elastic in it but then this stitch along here now is stretchy. I don't know how to link my the YouTube uh, actual tutorial but I'll have a look to see if I can just um, write the name of it in my show notes that I always put underneath in case you want to use it. And this is my overlocker, my stitching on the sides. It's so much fun. I want to overlock everything. I'm still practicing obviously because this is my first thing I've made and overlocking all the way around I think you have to obviously flick the the scissor of the blade bit off right at the end so that you can get to the end so that it doesn't keep cutting so um, I'm going to try that later if I finish them today I'll put a little extra insert of um, footage here to show them finished off uh, but I thought if I don't get this done now I probably won't tonight and then it'll go on another couple of days and it'll be endless so while I was waiting for my thread to come, I ordered this book, The Overlocker Technique Manual by Julia Hinks. And um, on Amazon, if you ordered that, you also got The Great British Sewing Bee Fashion with Fabric. And with that, you also got the pattern pack for all the patterns in that book. So um, I thought that would be useful because I'll, I'll need help with my overlocker. And I've also got the Tilly and the Buttons stretch book. Um, and there's a whole section on the overlocker in there. So I should be able to make some patterns very, well, make some outfits very soon from patterns. And um, I just need to get some jersey fabric. I did buy some but I want some cotton jersey I think because it's so warm and I think the polyester type jersey just holding it feels warm so I don't think I want to wear it. So that's that. Oh I'm totally I'm totally out of sorts I think it's so warm. I forgot to show you. there's one more knitting project I'm doing it's not hugely interesting it's not a particular sorry I'm rustling there's one more project I'm doing several years ago I went to a little yarn shop in Chepstow called Undy Yarns Undy is the area um, and it was for yarn shop day and I bought a ball of this yarn because they had knitted a little blanket up in it and this this is the yarn here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it all. It's like string with sort of flattened out pom-poms on it and they'd knitted a baby blanket in it. Harry was past being a baby by then but I just liked it and I thought well I'm going to buy it and there's bound to be someone who's going to have a baby and I can make them a blanket out of it. It's called Woolcraft Pom Pom and as you can see knitting, in, knitting instructions on the inside and then it tells you how to make the little blanket there like that and I have got oops, what the hell was that? this far and although it looks quite thick it's actually not too bad to it's not too, it's not too warm because you've got these stringy bits in between the only fa the thing i find is a bit slow going because you can't really wrap the yarn around you you have to sort of 
fold it like this and wrap and you do two stitches base two knits in between each each ball and it comes out like that so that's going to be a nice pram blanket it's hard to imagine cold weather at the moment with it being so warm so that's everything i've rushed through everything i haven't done a huge amount of sewing because um as i mentioned last time back in work full time and um so i i do tend to do a little bit of knitting in the evening i did finish the cardigan i had to sew the ends in and um i also had a little go on the mermaid's tail just for a little fun a little fun thing to do to fill the time and um so now i've got two projects to start anyway the flax sweater and the shawl the spinned drift spinned drift shawl so i'm going to cake that yarn up and start on those very shortly and all that's left is walkies with charlie and as i say it's been very warm here i know everybody's been saying that but it's very warm for a dog she has had her, a shave so her hair is short and she had a bath yesterday we've got um, a shower over the bath so we have to get her into the bath and she likes it once she's in there and she can, you can give her a nice scratch when you're rubbing the shampoo in and rinse her off so she's nice and cool and we took her for a walk along the river and we find it's a bit cooler there along the lanes just from the house we we're surrounded by cycle tracks and um, we just took, took her for a walk along the river which is along one of the cycle tracks and she promptly went straight down into the water to take a drink and came out with muddy paws but never mind if she felt cooler that's the main thing we've mostly been taking her down to Ogmore by sea and walking along the river there because it takes you the, the river goes out to the sea so you sometimes get a sea breeze that makes it a little bit more pleasant but um, I filmed there for you before so I didn't want to do that so I've just taken a couple of photos I've just taken a couple of photos of our little walk last night it's not really that inspiring but um, it's just somewhere a little bit different and hopefully when the weather cools again we will take her a, a little bit more further afield but we've been keeping her close to home at the moment because it's not very comfortable for her and um, like I say we're just taking her late at night and then um, it's not much to film really so anyway sorry it's a bit short and sweet this time I think I might try doing a weekly little vlog and putting them all together like Leslie does we're in her podcast which is not quite enough yarn I think it's called not not enough yarn not quite enough yarn um I'll I'll write it underneath and um I love her podcast she always makes me laugh and she does a weekly vlog and then puts them all together at the end of the month and I think with going back to work that might be an idea and then just edit it all together at the end so I'll see I'll see how I go and um, waffling on now. So anyway, be careful in the sun. Lots of sun cream, lots of water and lots of shade. And take care and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.